Everybody, this is Christian Buckley with another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm talking today with Sander. Hello, hello, Christian. Hello. It's great to see you in the the bright blinking lights there. I'm always a fan of the gadgetry around there. For folks that don't know who you are, why don't you give us that background? Who you are, where you are, what you do? Yes. Hello. My name is Sander. Uh, that's short for Alexander. I live in the Netherlands. Um, I'm working for Alton, the Netherlands. Uh, that's a company which is mainly focused towards engineering and companies who do engineering. Uh, we do projects and innovative uh, MVPs and R&D for these companies. Uh, I myself, I'm an Azure IoT solution architect. So. I'm thinking about how to connect devices somewhere in the world, uh, either in a factory or on a vehicle and have telemetry and diagnostics sent to the cloud and well, make it um, presentable towards the enterprise and thus adding value. If it, if that's an interesting space. I mean, there's been so much that's been happening in that space and my my background, I uh, my first tech company that I worked for ran operations at Hewlett Packard, um, and and so we we started to implement. This is in the early '90s, some uh, automation around the warehousing of you know the the storage of equipment, of devices, of monitors, of machines at this um, at this facility at it in Rockland, California, outside of Sacramento, but where where we were having to manually do things to where there were ARFID IDs and that would be yeah. a scanners would pick it up as it was, you know, walked into the space and revolutionized so much of that from that to uh, working in the collaboration space, but with manufacturing companies, high-tech manufacturing, building products, building, you know, Xboxes and, you know, and, and things like that. And, again the the edge devices that they would have in monitoring the machinery that was heavily automated so that somebody halfway around the world would get alerts if there was something which could impact like and delay the completion of and shipment of a batch of product it's just amazing you know some of the tools that are out there do you, do you work in any specific industries um well it's it's uh, mainly focused regarding Azure IoT, and well, it's it's used in many uh, markets and in many ways uh, locations. So I've done a project where the uh, edge device was located in the jungle of Malaysia, um, and I've also done a solution, uh, uh, several solutions where the uh, edge solution was running on a uh, on a ship or on a platform on, uh, in the sea. So uh, most of the projects that I do, they are involved regarding factories uh, and also all over the world, because th that's the, the challenge nowadays uh, that we are able to connect devices to the cloud, but they are mostly inaccessible or hard, it's hard to access them uh, because they are scattered all over the world. And we want to have them zero touch. Uh, um, we want to operate them and update them and, and, and uh, being able to uh, monitor them remotely um, over the air um, from the cloud. And only if it's really needed that somebody has to, well, uh, step in the car or in a plane, travel to the device, open the box where it's in, and try to figure out what's what's going on. Uh, you know, I was just thinking too that I, I think I was reading a couple of years back about you know Microsoft was exploring and a couple of companies have done this. I think Google's done the same, but where they had the underwater data center, which is essentially like a uh, you know like a shipping crate, a you know box, but then submerged so that it could benefit from the cooling of the cold ocean currents 
as well as for energy, and that they had monitoring throughout this thing so they could be aware of what's happening. Because like all servers, there's a lifespan and there's certain things that they can automate, but just be aware of what's going on and see how effective and efficient it is down there. And my first thought when seeing that, like it was, how's the cell phone reception down underwater <laughs> to be able to retrieve that you know, information? Uh, well, it's uh, zero to nothing. <laughs> yeah, right. I, so, I, I yeah, think so how are you a... capturing from even those remote jungle locations, for example, uh, and getting that data? Um, well, um, luckily, well, uh, what we need is, for, of course, is some kind of communication, and that could be a landline. Um, but uh, in our case, we had the luxury of having a, a LTE connection. It was a really poor connection, but it was there. Uh, and in, in, if it was raining, well, it was the rainforest, so it, it rained a lot. The yeah. reception was even uh, gone. So we had to wait until it stopped raining. And then we had connection again. But uh, while the connection was gone, the device itself was still capturing data and it was storing the data locally. And once the connection was back, it tried to send the data again back to uh, the cloud. So we had no uh, data loss. Uh, and, and we actually tried to measure, so we did measure it uh, to see and because this was the promise, of course, that we, we delivered to the customer. And we were able to do that just with the, uh, the standard Azure IoT Edge solution. There is a, uh, a offline scenario uh, supported with the standard solution. So that's, 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 that's great. If you want to build something yourself, that will cost you many hours. And now, right. well, it's free out of the box. So Sandra, you've been, uh, so you're a five-time MVP right now. Um, right. And uh, when, what month did you, or like, so how close, like I, I got mine January. And so I always like when they say, oh yeah, you hit, I just hit my 10 year. I was like, yeah, technically 10 and a half years, but you know. Same goes for me. Yeah. Uh, I also got my uh, MVP award in uh, January, 2017. Yep. So it's technically almost uh, five and a half years now. Yeah. So yeah. that's that's really great because that's the maximum that you can get out of it. Uh, you <laughs> that's get right. a half yep. year for free. But just be clear, Microsoft, we're not bitter. We're not bitter about that, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, but uh, so, how did you? What was kind of your path to becoming an MVP? Like, you know, Azure Space is not my space, and I know it's so broad. There's so many things, different aspects of what's going on there. Yeah. So, what was your path? Yeah, it's um, it, it, it started all that I was already passionate about sharing stuff that I did. Uh, I wrote some articles, I wrote some blogs, I gave presentations uh, to local communities about web development. And I also did some uh, mobile development on some mobile platform, which is not longer here. Uh, has to do something with Microsoft. We um, it. I know, yeah. And uh, from there, uh, I started to do some, some cloud development. And uh, back in 2016, um, Microsoft started with uh, a bit earlier already with, with um, offering Internet of Things on Azure. And I was immediately hooked. This, this is something that I really like. It remembers about the stuff that I learned when I was uh, a student. Um, so I picked it up fairly easy. And at some point, Microsoft asked me, well, we are doing something with a, uh, a LoRa network provider. It's the Things Network, a, a local community here. And we, we want to have a, uh, a workshop for people to, to play with, well, I believe it's, it's this sensor. So just a, a sample sample, well, I, I put some a box around it, but um, to have it uh, connected to the clouds uh, using that uh, platform. And then if people measure the temperature, it's sent to the cloud and there's a dashboard. So in the end, uh, I, I built a, uh, a workshop in a couple of weeks and it was pretty successful um, for both the things that work and Microsoft and well, we had a lot of people coming along. Uh, and then 
the guy from Microsoft who invited me to do this, he said, well, why, why aren't you a MVP? You do this so well, it's, it's so nice. Yeah. And I said, well, okay, um, I'm not quite sure how the program goes. So uh, I was nominated by him and I had to submit a lot of stuff that I already did. And yeah. at some point on the 1st of January, I was uh, with the family, of course, uh, New Year's Eve, uh, and I got that email uh, congratulations. So I was flabbergasted, of course. Um, but yeah, and from there, uh, if you're an MVP, um, it's so much easier to talk about your the subject that you love and get in touch with companies. And well, then it goes from one to another. Uh, well, and here we are. Yeah, it, it's it's a uh, it was tell so one you know so I had the same thing where I had Microsoft people and some other fellow MVPs that they, they I was speaking at a bunch of conferences and they're like wait you're not an MVP they just you know, assumed I was I was you know around I was doing all, all these things and and uh, you know honestly it was one of those things where I said oh that'd be great but I wasn't focused on that I wasn't wasn't my purpose and doing all the community activities that are out there. Um, but it's a, you know, to have, so now you used to be able to self nominate or for a while you could do that, but it has to be a Microsoft person or another MVP that submits. Have you submitted many other, you know, MVPs to, into the process? Um, no, not that much, a few of them, but um, um, to become an MVP, it's not, taken lightly. Uh, you have to have a track record of one or two years with actually a, a bunch of blogs and, and presentations. And so if you're not committed to do that, yeah, you do, just do it once in a while. Um, I'm not I'm not sure if you um, actually will be rewarded. Uh, so I tend to be a little bit um, uh, careful. Uh, if somebody asks me, well, can you nominate me? And uh, then I first ask, okay, Microsoft will look at this. Um, and what's your value? What do you bring to the community? Um, and if you're confident about that, uh, then I'm, I'm okay with it. But uh, if you're just, yeah, uh, are a casual, <laughs> casual blogger once in a while, Okay, then uh, think twice before yeah. uh, I will submit it. That's the the same thing where I've I've had I've had people that reach out like, hey, can you submit? And I'm like, for one, like I barely know you. That's you should not ask somebody that you like barely know. So because you and I like, we would have to have confidence in the quality and the volume of the contributions there. Yeah, that's one. Like get to know us first. And after a few months, if I'm just like, wow, this person is really going above and beyond and consistently, and there's a history, there's a pattern there. Um, but two, like I just had somebody that I submitted. I'm familiar. I've known her for years. I've seen she's one of these people where I've asked, like, why are you not an MVP? Like, who did you anger at Microsoft that you're not, you know, an MVP? But where I was able to go in and I said, look, I want to submit you, help me put together, like, like I'm aware of a bunch of things, but let's collect, like, what, like, what is the frequency of your blogging? What is the frequency? Like, how often are you speaking? She was organizing. She's the head of a user group. She organized other regional events, speaking at conferences around the world and doing all this stuff. She wasn't, you know, creating a lot of video content wasn't blogging a lot because she preferred events and other things, but there's a, there's no like set list of, Hey, if you are blogging X times a month and have spoken at this many, there's, there's no magical number that you could be like, check, nope. did that check, did that. It's a combination of those things. It's about adding value. Right. To the community. Uh, and that can be done in, in many ways. Uh, if you're, a somebody who answers a lot of questions on uh, Stack Overflow, or if you well, yeah, uh, a lot of places, yeah. Uh, uh, 
so, so once in a while I submit a uh, pull request on the Microsoft documentation because there's something uh, wrong or incomplete or just a, a typo. Right. Um, uh, that can also count. Um, yeah. and, and at this moment, I'm a lot of doing a lot of uh, answering questions on MS Learn. Yeah. Uh, they have a Q&A section over there. Um, and I love, well, that's, that's for me a, a nice uh, angle to, to add value to the community. And it, it also triggers me about people doing stuff. And, hey, yeah. and then I learn something from, well, they're doing this. And that's unexpected from what I uh, should do it. Um, well, so, that's, that's community begets your community. It's, it's, you know, if you're in there involved, even if you're, again, not, maybe your goal right now is not to become an MVP, it, you're not right, you're blo blogging a lot, but if you're participating in the community and providing that kind of feedback, that's one other thing that I would say is there's one thing to be, you know, Microsoft makes mis missteps, we all rush in, we give our feedback on those things, but you need to also do it in a constructive way that's helpful, that's, and that yeah. is something, I mean, that's just a, you know, a, a rule in life. <laughs> Yeah, really more receptive, it's, you know, it's of course, if it, it has to be constructive, uh, yeah. if you're just bashing, uh, that something is not working, right? Well, um, they will note it, but they cannot do anything with it. Right. But if you give an alternative or you elaborate why you think that the way it's done now is not the most obvious way. They are really open and willing to learn. And, and once in a while, I, I get a uh, follow up uh, where I have a call with the team, with the product team, about how I do stuff and why I do it. Um, and um, it's, I think that's one of the uh, most beautiful things that you get in touch with the product team so much easier uh, as an MVP. Well, that's too, I mean, the, the, again, thinking of entry points for non-MVPs that are interested in getting more involved, there are a number of formal and informal like working groups and things all around the various Microsoft technologies. Patterns and practices team is another great example. There's a lot of people that are very active within that space that aren't MVPs that are taking that approach of like, here's how we're trying to use it. Here's our experience. This is where, so it's, it's providing that constructive feedback of saying, here's what we saw with our customers or with our own, uh, with our own companies, or just participating in the discussion of the creation of solutions, and then going and testing that out in your organization and providing that feedback. That's actually another way to get involved. Like I, okay, same thing. I'm, I'm part of a number of groups where on a regular basis, we have calls, there's a limited number of MVPs and partners that are involved where we're able to provide that direct feedback back to Microsoft around compliance, for example, around the, the Microsoft Viva solution space. Again, I'm on the collaboration side of things, but these are working groups that I'm a member of and provide input into, but those are great ways for customers and for partners and for those that are looking to do more in the community to go in, to get involved and to raise their visibility with those key Microsoft people, because that's also part of that. I mean, the MVP is an award. It's recognizing the work that you've done, really focusing on the last year of giving back. If Microsoft people have no idea who you are because you're not standing out in the community in any way, then they'll never, you may have a great list of things that you've contributed, but they'll look at it and be like, I've never run into this person. I've never had an interaction. So that's why it's, it's a blend of those things. It, it is people that are involved. Yeah. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> it, it also goes the other way around. Um, I've been contacted by Microsoft already uh, several times um, regarding the, um, uh, the certification program. Mm -hmm. um, and they asked me to to help them as a subject matter expert uh, thinking about uh, the, um, the topics that should be in the exam. Um, 
and well, I'm really honored, of course, about that uh, uh, because that that means that Microsoft also sees me as a uh, well as a subject matter expert. Yeah. Um, and and well, it it's it it goes both ways. Yeah. That's very cool. Well, well, Sandra, really appreciate your time. I Meaning, I know that we're at the you know it, it's towards the end of your day, and you know we're really appreciate. Uh, you know, all that you do for the community. It's great to, to meet you, get to know you. And I, you know, I, I'm hoping one of these days for events to get back underway and get back. I was trying to think when was the last time I was in the Netherlands? And I think it was four years ago. It's, it's, yeah, it's been too long. I need to get over to the other side of the pond and see people again. Well, if you're around, uh, give me a call and, uh, and we will have a beer. We'll do There's lots of beer. Yeah. <laughs> well, really appreciate your time today. It was great talking to you. And for folks that want to get in touch with you, to reach you, what are the best ways to find you? Well, uh, of course, I'm on LinkedIn. Um, and I have a Twitter uh, handle, uh, S-V-E-L-D-E, um, S-Velde. Uh, I have a blog. If you just look up my name with, together with the name of with the word blog, you will find my blog um, on GitHub. Almost every project that I do uh, and the stuff that I build, like like the demonstration here behind me, I put it uh, on GitHub. Um, together with a friend, we even start the IoT Edge Foundation uh, on GitHub, where we submit um, uh, uh, Azure IoT modules, uh, which we think are, are handy uh, or fun or a good starting point to build your own modules. Um, so it's, um, I'm there <laughs> on the well, internet. And of, and of course, anybody watching or listening, uh, you see, you go to buktheplanet.com, I'll have the blog post that has all of uh, Sanders' information as well uh, and with links to all the social networks and to your site. And so appreciate your time and we'll, we'll hopefully see each other in the near future. Wow. Wow. Wow.